the width of the slit, and then you have the sign of this angle theta. Okay, so this is a given. I mean, this is, you do a, let's just say you do a more advanced calculation, then you end up with that expression where beta is this. And I sub zero is the intensity straight ahead. So it's beyond the scope of this class to derive that one. But at least I'll take it from there and say the following. So if I start with those equations, that the intensity of the light is at some point on the screen, the intensity in the forward direction times the sine of beta over beta, and then all of this squared with that beta being one half k a sine of theta. The, the a is the width of the slit. Sine of theta, theta is just that angle, right? From the middle to the point on the screen. Now, this is the wave number. Does anyone remember what this number is equal to? What is it related to? The wavelength, correct. Anyone remember the relationship between the wave number and the wavelength? It's 2 pi over lambda, over the wavelength. So that k is related to the wavelength of the light that goes through the single slit. OK? So that means that beta is 1 half times 2 pi over the wavelength, a sine theta, right? That's what that is. Or if you like, this is pi a over lambda sine theta. That's what this is. Now, uh, that's the intensity on the screen. If the fringe is dark, then what is the intensity? The intensity of the light is what? What is it? Zero. Exactly. So if it's dark, then this guy is zero. But if that guy is zero, then I sub zero sine of beta over beta squared has to be zero. Which means that Which means that, well, the intensity in the forward direction is that zero. So I can divide by I sub, I sub zero and I get the sine of beta over beta squared is equal to zero. And that means that the sine of beta over beta has to be zero. where beta is this. But we have a little bit of a problem here. Because if I consider beta, which is this one half k a sine theta, or maybe I'll just use that one, or it doesn't really matter, pi a, actually a over lambda, Right. So you might you might think that this means beta is equal to zero. Is that true or not true? Not true. If it's equal to zero, then sine would be one then. No, sine of zero is one. I mean, sine of zero is zero. Hmm? 
do you did you ever learn in calculus what the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is? It's a famous result. What is it? One. One. It's one. So if you think if you think that beta has to be zero, if you if you think that way, right? Then you say, oh, if beta is zero, then theta has to be zero. The other theta, right? But let's just do this then over here to stick to that. First of all, if beta is zero, you can't divide by zero. But you have a zero over zero, which is undefined. So this is wrong. One way to look at it, one way to prove this, one way to prove this is to do the following. The sine of beta, what is the Taylor series expansion of the sine of an angle? It's beta minus beta cubed over three factorial plus beta to the fifth over five factorial minus, they alternate, right? <coughs> beta to the seventh over seven factorial plus beta to the ninth over nine factorial minus plus blah, blah, blah. What if I divide by beta? Then beta divided by beta is one, and beta cubed over three factorial divided by beta will be beta squared over two factorial plus, and beta to the fifth divided by beta will give me beta to the fourth over five factorial minus beta to the six over seven factorial plus minus blah, 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 blah. And what happens if I take the limit as beta goes to zero? Then this term goes to zero, then this term goes to zero, this term goes to zero, and so all the other ones, and you get one. So if it's a dark spot, if it's a dark spot, this intensity is zero, period. And the intensity is given by this expression. So this whole thing is zero. Now, this is not equal to zero. That's just whatever the intensity is in the forward direction. In fact, it's bright over there. So that's not zero. So if you divide by that, you get that the sine of beta over beta quantity squared is zero. So this is good. And this has to be true. The question is, for what? What is the condition on that theta so that beta, so that this sine of beta over beta is zero? So you cannot say that beta has to be zero. Because if you say that beta is equal to zero, this ratio is one. And if beta is if beta is zero, then right? Then then this expression becomes zero equals pi a over lambda sine zero, and that implies that the sine of the zero is zero, so that means theta is equal to zero. But in the forward direction, this is bright. So you have a, a, a contradiction with this. So, for what other values of beta then, if beta equal to zero is not a solution to this equation, for what other values of beta Will this ratio be zero? The answer is, can I erase this now? I guess I'm sort of, I sort of have to. Well, the sine of beta has to be zero. The problem with me choosing beta equal to zero over here is that Yes, the sine of zero, the sine of zero will give me zero, but then I'm divided by zero, so it's undetermined, it's undefined. So, you know, um, so we don't wanna go there. So, what's another angle where the sine of beta can be zero? Pi. Pi, exactly. So then you make sine of beta equal to beta, right, will be zero if beta is pi because in that case in that case then you have the sine of pi over pi now you're not dividing by zero 
but now this numerator is zero over pi, and now that is definitely equal to zero. So that's good. So if beta is pi, it's good. What if, is that the only solution? What if beta is two pi? Then this becomes the sine of two pi over two pi, which is the sine of two pi is zero, but then you divide by two pi, which is not zero, so this is zero, so that's good. So that works. Which other solution is possible? Three pi, right? So three pi, so then that means that this becomes the sine of three pi over three pi. The sine of three pi is zero over three pi, so you're not divided by zero, so this is definitely equal to zero, so that's good. And you can see the pattern, four pi, five pi, blah, 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 blah. Notice that the first one was one. It was that zero. So I can say that beta, therefore beta has to be m pi, where m is now, well, the values that will give you this solution. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, without the zero. So if beta is m pi, but beta, is also equal to pi a sine theta over lambda. But now I'm using the condition that came from dark spots, which gives me zero intensity which gives me these values for beta, but beta is defined by this, so therefore I take m pi and I put it over here, again with m starting with one, not zero, and then this equals pi a lambda sine of theta, but just to remind myself, this is for the dark spots, because I made the intensity equal to zero. And now the pi's cancel, and notice that a sine of theta for the dark spots is m lambda with m starting with one, a positive integer. So that's where that comes from. It comes from considering the intensity of the light on the screen after going through the slit. So I kind of wanted to show you where that comes from. In the end, it's just a formula to where you plug and chug, kind of. But I kind of want to say, tell you where that comes from. This is just a mystery to me. Can I do something else? Can I erase this? I remember when I learned about that in, I think it was in the beginning of calculus too. You know, the sine, the limit of, of as an angle goes to zero, the sine of the angle divided by the angle is one. Wow. I thought I was never going to see that again. Well, it, this is a case where it shows up. It's like, friend you haven't seen for a long time. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, or maybe an enemy that you haven't seen for a long time. <laughs> and then you see it again, like, man, what are you doing? Uh, okay, um, so let's consider this. Um, <laughs> again, continuing with the single slit. Right, so we have this, and then there's a 
width of the here of A, and then you have light coming in, shining on this slit, right? A light, where with this lambda, the light is coming in this way, right? And then you have a screen some distance away. All right? Um, so I use this like rectangles to denote bright and dark and bright and bright and dark, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay. Uh, and the condition for destructive interference is this, correct? Correct. So uh, this distance here is x. This is the central, and that one is bright, as you saw in that picture that I showed you. But what I have over there is a condition for the dark. Fringes. Right? A sine theta equals m lambda. Right? That's for the dark fringes. Now, uh, what if I consider this dark over here? If I consider that dark, maybe I'll use blue to do this for the first dark. If I consider this dark over here, right? Then uh, I want to know what is this height over here? What is that y? Uh, well, this is theta. So uh, that would be a is fixed, is the width of the slit. Lambda is fixed, is the wavelength of the light coming in. M can be. One, two, three, four, five. In fact, I can just do this, right? If m is equal to one, then a sine theta one, how about I call it one, equals lambda, right? Because m is equal to one. If So that's this one over here. Dark. Talking about dark fringes, right? Remember. So, um, but notice the following. Um, if, if theta one is small, then the sine of theta one is approximately equal to the tangent of theta one, right? And what is the tangent of theta one from geometry in this picture? It would be y, how about we call it y one over x, correct? Opposite over adjacent. So if I take this expression and I say this is A, and instead of the sine of theta one, I use this, approximated as a tangent of theta one, that's equal to lambda. So A equals, and then the tangent of theta one is y one over x equals lambda. So therefore, y one equals lambda x over A. So I know what this distance is. This is lambda x. X is the distance. I don't like the x honest. I prefer L over A, the width of the slit. What if I want to know, I'm now going to use a different color so it's easier for you to see. What if I want to know this distance from this dark to the central bright mass? That would be the one that corresponds to M equals 2. So what is Y2 equal to? So I'm going to do that over here. So I would have A sine of theta 2 equals 2 lambda, because M is 2, right? So now we have this, which is theta 2. All right. And um, well, again, sine of theta 2 will be approximately the tangent of theta 2. And the tangent of theta 2 is going to be what? It's going to be y2 over x. Correct? So y2 will be 2 lambda x over a. So that means that this distance is twice lambda 
x over a. But what did we say lambda x over a is? Is y1. So that means that this distance in green is twice this distance in blue. So that means that this distance over here is y1, which is lambda x over a, because that'll make this whole distance from here to m equals 2, it'll be y1 plus y1, which is lambda s over a plus lambda x over a, which is twice lambda x over a, which is this. Yes? I'll do one more. What if we say a sine of theta 3 equals then 3 lambda? Well, the sine of theta, if this distance x is long compared to a, uh, a, this will approximate to a tangent of theta 3, which is 3 lambda. But the tangent of theta 3 is going to be, now, I'll use red. Now, the tangent of theta 3 will be, you know, oops, suppo yeah, so, sorry, it's supposed to go here, right? right? So, this distance over here is y3, right? So, the tangent of theta 3 <coughs> is y3 over x. Y is measured from the center of prime maximum, right? So this would be y3 over x. So this is 3 lambda. So that means that y3 will be 3 lambda x over a. In other words, it's that means that this is y1, which is lambda x over a, so that this distance, y3, is y3 plus y3 plus y3, which is 3, I'm sorry, y1 plus y1 plus y1, which is 3y1. So this is just 3y1. Now, the location of the fringes is symmetrical, symmetric about the center of right maximum. So what is this distance going to be? It will be the same distance as from the center of right maximum to that one, which is y1, lambda x over a. And what is this distance going to be? Well, it's the same distance as from here to there, which is y1, lambda x over a. And what's this distance going to be? Oh, same as that one, y1, which is lambda x over a. So the thing to notice is, what's the distance between the first dark above the center of right maximum and the first dark below? the center of right maximum. So what is this distance? Two by, one. Two by one. So that's why in the picture that I showed you, you see, let me put it up again. It's the picture. I first told you what the results are and then I'm kind of showing you where they come from, essentially, right? So notice, this is the center prime maximum, right? So this is the first dark below, and this is the first dark fringe above the center prime maximum. And then this is the second dark fringe above the center prime maximum, third dark fringe above the center prime maximum, second below, third below. But look at the separation This is between, I'm just gonna use my fingers and keep it like that, right? Between two adjacent dark fringes. That's the same as this too. And that's the same as those two, and that's the same as those two. But from here to here, I gotta go once, twice. Yes. Which you don't get in the case of light coming through the double slit. In the case of light going through the double slit, we didn't get that. Yeah, over here, 
this is the central prime maximum. This is a chemical zero. And then, you know, this separation distance is the same. The one, the first one below and the first one above, that one is the same as this, is the same as that, 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 is the same as that. In fact, is the same as the two bright ones, two bright, two bright, two bright, two adjacent, right? Let's just see. But you don't have that in the case of the light coming through the single slit. You get a different diffraction pattern on the screen. Well, so there are similarities, there are differences, right? Um, So this expression that I wrote on the board for the intensity on the screen, somewhere on the screen off from the central prime maximum, is the intensity in the forward direction times the sine of you know, this quantity beta over beta squared. Where beta was that 1 half k a if you if you graph this if you do a graph of that of the intensity as a function of beta what you get is let's say this is the intensity and this is beta here what you end up getting is this if I graph this right this is I sub zero, sine of beta over beta, all of this squared, right? I do a graph of that as a function of beta. Uh, this is zero. So the first time that the intensity is zero, that's when this ratio is zero, is when beta is equal to pi. So then you have pi here. I don't like that too much. Me. Well, it's just kind of like I, I guess we don't need this anymore. So at the central prime maximum, right, when, when beta is zero, that's bright, that's I sub zero right there. But then when beta is pi, this thing drops. It kind of goes like a sign, but you know, shh, drops. But then the next time that you get zero is two pi. So then you have two pi, and then three pi, and then four. So this goes like this, and the intensity keeps getting smaller as you go away. And then it's symmetric on the other side, right? This would be like minus pi, minus two pi, minus three pi. So it drops like this, it goes to zero, and then it goes like this, and then. So this picture over here, this intensity profile, is what you see over here. It's like you have a light coming in, here's the slit with A, uh, now what they did is they superimpose on this screen like the x-axis, which is really the beta axis, right? Um, or, you know, beta, I guess. Uh, and then they considered, um, you know, they, they, they just plotted the intensity profile, right? So every point on the screen where you see this intensity profile go to zero, that's dark, dark, dark. So it's dark for m equals one, m equals two, m equals three. But not m equals zero. m equals zero, you get a, that's when you get the most intensity. But, so it, it wouldn't be dark, it would be bright. So dark, dark, drop, dark. Okay. So what's up with not a slit, not a single slit, but a single circular aperture. What happens if we change this slit? Think of it like the door, you know, where the width of the door at the top, in the middle, at the bottom, it's the same throughout, right? So this A over here, you can, if you can think of it like this, you have a, uh, you know, the width, well, it's like into and out, so 
It's really like this. And the width of the slit is the same everywhere. And, you know, what I've been talking about today is, is the result that you get when the width is the same. What happens if the width of the slit, instead of being like a door, rectangular, like if I look straight ahead of the, of the slit, right? This is the width of it. From here to here is A. But it doesn't matter. I can look at it over here. It's still A. I look at it over there, right? It's still A. It's the same width throughout the slit. What happens if the shape of that slit, which is not a slit anymore, I shouldn't call it a slit, let's say of that aperture is now circular. <coughs> what changes occur? Um, so what happens is, I'll talk about that in a second. What happens is the following. See? So what is this comment over here about this one right here? I mean, I think I have a picture on the screen that I can still use. So, um, can I erase some of this? Yes. So we have this. I want to consider, I'll just erase here. 